Hello everybody and welcome to another evening of Nail Talk Live. And today it's all about the refill. Yeah, the thing we do most in the salon. Yeah, because we are filing and filing and filing. When the clients get in, we have to file off the old product, we have to <coughs> reapply the new product, yeah. and we do that every three weeks yeah. again. Yeah. Every single client. So our life as a nail technician is a life spent in dust <laughs> <Yeah>. and ashes. <laughs> That is the life of a nail tech. Yeah. I personally hate dust. I do too. But I love nails. Yeah. We love Nail Talk Live. We get started. And because we all do refills every day in our nail studios, we don't only talk about the refill today. We also have some inspirational nail art designs mm -hmm. and some other cool stuff to show you. Animals with nails. Yeah. A little bit of stamping. A little, a little bit, bit of, of everything. Airbrush, yeah. But before we get started, of course, I have to tell you that our trainers are here again tonight. Deborah and Shriza, of course. Hi. Hi, girls. So refilling or rebalancing. Yeah. There has been some discussion about what is the correct term between these two. Mm -hmm. And let's just make a deal with each other. Mm -hmm. When you talk about a refill, it's in the cuticle zone of the nail. Mm -hmm. You're refilling. And rebalancing is when you have to file down the entire nail to 10%, file away 90% to make room for your new application. Yeah. So you do a lot of nails as well in your st studio. Well, mm -hmm. not that much anymore. No but you still do, and the refill. What is your most horror part of the refill? The dust. The dust, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah the, but of course we have an... Um, what's extraction it ventilation. Yeah, an extraction ventilation. Yeah. That's a nice word. Yeah, uh, we have that, so it's, it's more <coughs> easy like that, and um, yeah, that is the horror part, but yeah. yeah. Are the things you two don't like when it comes to a refill, Deborah and Cherisa? For me, it's only taking off the old product because it's uh, still on so good. Mm -hmm. And then you're always b busy for like 20 minutes to get it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then to start it all over again for just two millimeters more. Yeah. yeah. That's just so unsatisfying. Yeah. yeah. And Charita? Yeah, the thing that uh, annoys me the most is that the, uh, the nails, the growth of the nails, is in all kind of way uh, except the right way, so straightforward. So if the client have nails that grow to the left, to the right, downwards, uh, that's terrible because uh, for me every time it's uh, rebalancing, and, uh, but then it's very hard. Yeah, that's also one of the things I think is most difficult to correct a nail that grows in a growth pattern that is not the way that you would want it ideally. Mm -hmm. So for instance, when it grows down or to the side and that you have to correct that. Yeah. And that also takes a lot of experience because your eye needs to see what the potential possibilities are on how to fix that nail. Deborah, do you have specific tricks that you use, for instance, with a hook nail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I fill a bit more on the top so I can file the low arch up. So it makes a thin square, uh, straight nail. So you make it thicker, a really yeah. thick, thick on, yeah, on yeah. the top. Yeah, but on the front side, I uh, fill it thin with my e-file. So it looks very thin, but actually it's a little bit uh, eye trickman. Ah, <laughs> and um, Shiriza, when you talk about uh, doing nails, hey, you, your main thing is technical nails. Mm -hmm. Are there specific, s specific nail shapes that you just cannot fill? Uh, yeah, that would be the rationale, Mont, because uh, uh, we need a very uh, straight upper arch, but also the lower arch has to be very straight, and all the angles have to be perfect. And uh, for me, that's only uh, uh, possible to do it in the correct way on a new set of nails and not in a refill. Uh, you can make then uh, a nice ballerina nail, but uh, not the Russian almond anymore. Absolutely. Yeah, do you agree with that, uh, Deborah? Because you always wear the modern Elmet nail. Yeah, absolutely. You can only refill uh, that, that nail if you're going back to a different uh, um, shape. And when you uh, put <coughs> only gel, gel polish on top of it, because this shape is just not refillable. Also not after three weeks when you just do a little cuticle application. Yeah. Because no, because you get, you, you get a different color. You get a different color. 
the color at the cuticle area is going to be different from the one you used before because you apply a color which you uh, self-made. You can yeah. never have the same color, almost never. And you can refill. I did some refill, but it was a sneaky refill. I refilled it with Strass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. That's a yeah. cheap one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it is uh, easy if you do a quick refill. Okay, put on some Strass and then it's filled. Hmm. Good one to take in, uh, in mind yeah. because that's we're not going to show that, but of no. course you <laughs> can elongate the lifespan of your nails a little bit more. Yeah. For me, the most problematic thing in a fill was always the big question, is there lifting or not? <laughs> and really still to this very day, if I do somebody's nails or my own nails, that's the big thing. Is it still on there or is there lifting? Mm. And I'm almost manic about that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a, that's also the first thing I do when I, n when I met one of my clients, when she got into the shop, first thing I, I would do, say, hello, take her hands yeah. <laughs> and look. <laughs> okay, there's no lifting, there's no problems. <coughs> Am I the only one or do you, fe do you see this as well, Cherise and Deborah? Oh, a while ago, in the earlier days, but with the good products from now, there's no much lifting. No, that's true. Yeah. If you have, for example, good rubber base, yeah. uh, then lifting is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. So uh, Only yeah. when they've really bumped it like very hard, but yeah. Yeah, that can be. Not in a normal base. Oh, well, then it's yeah. just a little mental psychological no. damage that I had over time. <laughs> when my clients so. come in, I always, I, I'm always looking at their hands and I always see the problems. And then they sit uh, at my table and maybe there's um, a one that was really hard and broken. And uh, I saw that already. Oh, you see that already? Yeah, yeah. yeah but I'm looking, I'm searching for problems. And yeah. 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 yeah, it's a tick. But you yeah. as a nail technician must understand and also feel this tick. So <laughs> talking about ticks. <laughs> Doing a refill, of course, you can also do that French manicure in a reverse way. Miriam Zwart is going to show us how to do this on an already filed nail. So the nail has been thinned out and only about 10% is left on the nail. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to continue working on that. So let's have a look. So there's four weak growth area at the cuticle, what you can clearly see, she's shortening the nail. Of course, always shorten the nail before you start to thin it out. And that's because you don't need to thin that area then. Mm -hmm. So it's you make it yourself a lot easier. Then at a high RPM, this is between 20 and 30 thousands, she's filing down the surface of the nail. And here we have a little bit of lifting and you can see with the ceramic bit, it just floops, gone and it's away. When the nail is then prepped and ready and bond has been applied, then we applied acrylic product on top, the nail bed extension or the elongation. Applying it near the end of the smile line and then working your way towards the cuticle area while holding the finger angled downward to prevent seepage into the cuticle or the side walls. Building up the wall, and it doesn't need to be quite as tall as it were when you would do an elongated nail on the form because you want to have a tiny thinner application and just gently press it in and correcting the smile line at a cuticle zone opaque pink has been used for a nice transition into the natural nail and especially with acrylic products the more the powder is based on clear the better it adheres to the natural nail and that's why we prefer to use clear based acrylic products around the cuticle Ooh, what's she doing? She's going to mix a nice color using glitter spray and it all sparkles away. <laughs> yeah. Using the little mixing jars. She already filed the smile line and yeah, the surface mm -hmm. of the nail bed, as you can clearly see. <coughs> and now a soft pastel muted shade with some glitter. Cool, lovely. These glitters mix so well with every product. Yeah. Yeah. Also with gel, with yeah. power gel. And with neon pigments. Mm. Yeah. And as you can see, she really pushes <coughs> in the product on the sides to make sure that it's nice and, and, and straight. The emery board. Do you use the emery board a lot, Cherisa? Yeah, I use it a lot, especially uh, with uh, uh, 
if I make a French manicure, so to file the nail bed. But for the form, I don't use the emery boards. The expert bit you do use a lot. Of course. Mm -hmm. That's my body. Especially with the new, uh, the new ones. And then after buffing and photoshopping the nail with a white block, <laughs> nice. the nail is ready to be high shined. This is done now with Supreme Finish, but you could use any of the top gels and a little bit of cuticle oil. Especially after filing down and doing the refill, the skin of the client has a tendency to become very dry mm -hmm. because all the dust gets on the skin of the client. That is why in a refill it is important to use a cuticle oil and of course also explain to your client to use that twice daily to maintain the integrity of her natural nails and of course the beautiful, beautiful sharp cuticles. Yeah. <coughs> so this is what we do daily. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have thoughts on this? Well, I have a question for, for both Charissa and Deborah. That expert bit, both of you are working quite a lot with it. What makes that an essential tool when you finish file the nail? Uh, should I start? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, for me, it's very, uh, very cool to use it around the cuticle area because you can uh, you can seal your product into the natural nail. Yeah. Don't uh, touch the natural nail, but just yeah. blend it, uh, blend your product to the natural nail. Yeah. So that's very easy because you don't damage the um, the cuticle with no. your file because that's way bigger than just the point of that uh, bit. And after, if you use the right way, you can uh, file the complete uh, the complete nail and then touch it file it and touch mm -hmm. it until you think it's very smooth and then after you only have to use uh, your buffer or your smooth operator so it's perfect because it has a blue uh, belt mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. it has a blue band so uh, it's a little bit softer yeah. than uh, than for example a green uh, mm -hmm. band like a normal bit to uh, to take away the product it isn't sharp or hard hard uh, hot for the customer so it's no. really great it's nice very nice file. but you have to know how to use it absolutely oh yeah that's yeah. otherwise thing. you can cut in the cuticle or yeah. something or yeah. damage your uh, your um, your shape your shape yeah. mm -hmm. so am I right in understanding that you use the same bit also on the whole surface yes. of the nail? yeah oh I didn't know that you I could smoothen I it actually. out no okay cool. I think yeah. we're going to have a life uh, about that. At what kind of RPM is, uh, do you use it? Um, uh, it depends, because uh, my students, I tell them to use only uh, 15,000 uh, to get used to the way of filing, yeah. so that you don't overfile. Uh, but for me, when I work, I use the 30,000 yeah. uh, RPM. Full. Yeah. Full me speed. Too. Full yes, speed. full speed. Yeah. But you have to teach yourself how to uh, teach yourself or go you to need a class. You feel how it slides yeah. over the nail. But to start it, you you can all, uh, also use this on uh, 15,000 yeah. uh, RPM. That's also no problem. Yeah, with this grid, yes, yeah. because it's fine. Yeah. With yeah. the more coarse one, you should turn it higher, because otherwise yeah. it goes yeah. uh, biting in the nail. Yeah, true. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. And Charissa also mentioned that I'm going live with her. Yeah. A class on e-filing. Of course, that's in Dutch, but we do every two weeks on Monday evenings we do a live workshop mm -hmm. in the Nail Talk Live group and of course you are also welcome and if you ask your questions in English I will answer them back to you in English. <laughs> Miriam has another demo for us and this is a full color overlay because we don't do that much French anymore we do do a lot of full color applications so ha let's have a look. So pushing back cuticle, and we see again that she first shortens the nail. She's now using the safety bit, which is a, which is a very safe bit to use when you want to uh, thin out the natural na or the nail, not the natural nail, of course, the overlay. And she removes the old product. When you do a full color application, you can leave a little bit more product than when you want to do, a, for instance, an acrylic overlay. Mm, yeah. And she's blending in the old product using the same safety bit. And the dust cap is on the hand piece of the file to protect it against the dust that gets into the file or possibly goes into the file. The shape was a little bit round, so she's making it a little bit more almond shaped. Because it's longer now, so she can have uh, make it more. 
and then with the prep bit, she's removing the excess cuticle off of the nail plate. You can also file the natural nail dull using this bit. And she's going to do a first application of fiber coat, I believe. Yes. And now she's going to work with a little bit more product and she's pulling this over the nail to create like a swimming layer mm -hmm. that you can apply your product onto and it bleeds and self-levels perfectly. A little drop of fiber coat. This is the frosted pink and she really massages it from left to right and then takes a fresh pen to control the movements of the fiber coat. And that is because this is an almost non-filing or a non-filing nail, yeah. mm. which is very popular nowadays. After cure, just remove the sticky layer. Isn't that where your photoshopping uh, name came from, Sarisa? From this nail, the non-filing, oh, mo only photoshopping. No, 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 it's a, uh, it's a technique that they use in Russia to make the surface completely uh, smooth. smooth. Ah, okay. yeah. This is the hygienic buffer. And the hygienic buffer is also, of course, uh, in the hygienic file system, but it's very soft. She's only filing just a tiny bit. And this trend came from uh, the fact that people hate all the filing that we have to do before we are able to do mm -hmm. the fill. Mm -hmm. So we want to eliminate the filing after, after we the did the fill. Yeah, that's true. And <laughs> if you do this a lot, then you don't need to file anything. Yeah. Although I love my files. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Using the triangle brush, you can use that for French manicure paint on technique, but also, as you can see, to make your perfect first layer of gel polish. This makes sure that the application is perfect around the cuticle and it also prevents it from being too thick. Mm -hmm. And then sealing it with a top gel of choice. This is really what we do, I think, most yes, of yes. the time. Yeah, yeah. Not Absolutely. me, but this In is general, the way nail technicians. people yes. work. Yes, yeah. yes. This is the nail that you see the most. Yeah. And a little bit of cuticle oil. Nice, very nice. Always nice. looks very wet on screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in reality, of <laughs> course, it's there to nurture and moisturize yes. the natural nail. Yeah. So are you fans of the non-filing technique? The non-non-filing technique, Deborah? No, actually not. No. <laughs> no, no. It's not in my head. I cannot uh, let it go to not file. I have to file. It's just because I'm an old school trained uh, nail technician. I need to file. Yeah, it also uh, for me it also feels unfinished if I yeah, don't file. Yeah, for me too. Even yeah. if yeah. even if uh, I'm sorry if I break in, but even though it's a little bit filing, but yeah. I need to file. Just, just yeah. Yeah, I always at yeah. least I feel that I need to file around the cuticle. Yeah, mm -hmm. just no, to get no. an oh, airtight sorry. seal, Theresa. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you say around the cuticle, but uh, uh, for example, if I give that glass uh, around the cuticle, it's possible to apply your product that you don't have to file it. That's way more easy than the uh, than the end of the nail, the, the last piece of the extension. It's always uh, because this technique, most of the times, it's with gel, and gel uh, uh, it shrinks a little bit, so it's always a little bit. Uh, roundish and if you want to make it sharp you need your file to go to go in it mm -hmm. even a little bit and you can see that in your end result you're yeah. talking Always. about the hairline of the nail yeah, I the think. so the very yeah. end of the extension yeah. yes that it pulls back a little bit yeah, yeah, it's yeah. round. It's a little bit yeah. Mm, yeah. always. Yeah. And in the uh, uh, in the cuticle area, you don't have that problem because you can make it very thin, thin. Yeah. and then you you take it away, and then it's uh, uh, you can uh, build it up mm. uh, uh, soft. So if you put your gel polish on it, it has to be perfect. And the end of the nail, the hairline, if you do tch -tch 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 yeah. like like seven or eight times. You're done. Yeah. But we love to. Yeah. Chup 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 chup. yeah. <laughs> Always. But we you need see to the do difference that. if you yeah. do it in compare if you don't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can see it. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. Perhaps yeah. It, it's my lifting issue that I want to file around yeah. the cuticle. I'm, I just have a lot of issues. Yeah. <laughs> and many of them are related no. to nails. Um, I also have an issue with. Uh, we had a trend a couple of years ago that people were polishing the nails of their pet. <gasps> And oh I had a girl yeah. working in my nail studio and I had, no. a, I had a dog and she was called Truffle and she polished the nails of Truffle. And after that, I wasn't there. I didn't know. Otherwise, I would have kicked her yeah. because Truffle hated her after yeah. that. <laughs> and she only wanted to attack her every <laughs> time she came into the salon. <laughs> so I believe Sylvana has an item on this. Oh, no. Okay. Good. Yes, I have. Good evening. Yes, I was trolling through my Instagram and then I saw this. 
Yeah. Oh. Dog. Oh. Tsh, wearing no. uh, nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this one. Nail art on a dog. Oh, okay. oh that's heavy. That's heavy. And for the last one, I saw this. And <laughs> if you look at the pen, it, that is uh, specially made for dog. A but dog still. nail polish. Because you never ever put uh, human nail polish on a dog. Because it's very toxic. And uh, this nail polish is formulated especially for dogs. Yeah. So only use that. Sarisa, would you put this on your dog's nails? <laughs> <laughs> I did that before. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No. I had the special polish. I bought it in some uh, some very nice shop in The Hague. It's uh, it's especially for dog. It's very big. And I did that with my chihuahua only one time. But she don't care. Poor thing. She don't care. <laughs> she don't even yeah. uh, bounce back. Is it If it's for dogs, it's okay. But yeah. not human nail polish. Well, get back to you, Pepijn. Well, I'm still not convinced. <laughs> no. I find this no. a total waste of time yeah. also. Mm. True. Why would you do this? No. And how much would you charge for a set? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's another dilemma. Because we have 20 nails. Yeah. And who's going to pay for it? Well, probably in America they will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for the they dog shows. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But mm. did you ever paint anybody's dog's nails? Never. Uh, <laughs> no. And I, I ain't going to either. So Never. <laughs> no. 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 Well, I'm with you, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, of course, we do a lot of refills. Sometimes French manicure, sometimes gel polish, and also baby boom. And that's mm -hmm. what Wendy is going to show us. So Wendy is also going to file down the nail. This was originally also a baby boom nail. And she's just filing down the old product using the ceramic smooth top bit, with which is also a very safe bit to use. And it's a very soft bit. It's, very, uh, it's a very calm bit. Then using the hygienic files to redefine the shape and using the diamond prep bit, the diamond cuticle bit, to go around the cuticle, removing the cuticle from the natural nail. And then some soft bond primer, first on the natural nail. You can also uh, just pull this over the whole nail because it won't yellow. <coughs> A tiny application of pink product. This is really what we call a fill because she leaves the bulk of the product there. Yeah. She only reapplies the product where you need it. You can do this with baby boom, but you cannot do this more than once, I believe, the boomer. Mm -hmm. No, not with a baby boom. No. no. Or you let it grow out and then put some uh, gel polish over it. Yeah. Well, in my studio in the past, we always asked clients, do you want to ha do a fill every time when you want to do a baby boom or a rebalance? Or do you want to have a full rebalance and then a fill and then a full rebalance? Because then we just put the white a little bit higher yeah. in the yeah. baby boom nail. Further on yeah. the nail. Because then it can grow out a little bit more. Yeah. Now using a semi-transparent color, one of the seduction sheer gel polishes. Do you know which color this is, the pink one? No, orchid? I was looking at it like... I think the orchid. I think mm. the orchid. That's the one I have on my nails also at the moment. Oh, and then this is the magnolia. And here we have another color because this was filmed just after we first released and launched the four sheer gel polishes. And this is probably magnolia. Yeah, it's a little so. bit more beige, mm -hmm. so it depends on what you like to wear. Mm -hmm. yep. Great, nice. I do like the longer baby booms as well. Yeah, yeah. but Me in too. the almond shape, not in anything else. In no, almond. no, no, no. I agree. Not in a square or something. No, no, or or, or a ballerina. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and one of these is finished with the diamond dust, just to give it a sparkle. Yeah. Mm. And this helps, of course, to also hide little imperfections. Yes, that's yep. true. Yes. Mm. And I said hide little imperfections. That's because when you do a fill, like Wendy did, and you leave the majority of the product on the natural nail, then it is of absolute vital importance that you file the 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 
artificial product into the natural world, that you blend that perfectly. Because if you do not blend that perfectly, then you will always see that. Do you agree, Syriza? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I have nothing to say about that because I was thinking the same thing. And also it's, it's difficult when you have a little bit of lifting because then you have to file further and that makes it very difficult to create a perfect blend in your baby boom. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do a lot of baby boom, Deborah? Um, not really, actually, no. My uh, customers don't want it. They only want the colors and especially, uh, I know we have a lot of new colors, so every time, every month, do you have new colors, new colors? Only colors. It's not in my region to do a baby boom. I don't know why. We're not so far away. And uh, <laughs> uh, Theresa does baby, do baby booms a lot. And for no me, no in no. my salon, no. No, I don't do it that much. No, you don't so. do that much, uh, no. baby boom. Not no. anymore. But the ones that you do are just utterly stunning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> if I make a baby boom, I want to make it something special, like really long or hide something uh, uh, underneath the, uh, the last layer. Uh, or for a picture or something, but I don't make baby boom that much. And if I make it, normally it's only one time, and then I take the whole product, uh, okay. uh, I file everything down. Because never a second time, no. no that's yeah, mm -hmm. Even though we do a lot of refills, I think we are now fed up with all the dust. Yeah. I actually feel it in my nose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we're not, not wearing our protective masks at the moment. And all the dust, I think we're in the mood for something fun. Something fun. Yeah, by Natalia. Yeah. yeah. So she's filing down the residue that she applied on the finger. And she's going to do something sparkly. Yeah. So this is a refill? Yeah. Again a refill. Yeah. But not that much dust. No. She's doing the refill with a white block. Yeah. Well, that is That's really okay. technique. Yeah. <laughs> if you're able to do the refill with a white block. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it has something to do with the thing that Deborah mentioned. Yeah, I think yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. A sneaky refill. Yeah. A sneaky, sneaky refill. <laughs> and Natalia, sometimes it's sneaky. <laughs> 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 no, that's not sneaky, that's smart. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> smart. Okay, so we fi she filed down everything and it's all dull, almost. Of course, when you want to file like this on a client, be careful that you um, demark the edges of yeah. the white block because otherwise oh, if you go in the side so wall, sharp. it is chaka boom boom. Cool. Mm -hmm. Chaka boom boom. Chaka boom boom, blue, blue, blue. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Gel polish bones? That's uh, your color. I think so. Yeah. The best uh, of 19, uh, layer 19? 2019. <laughs> Base and top, yeah. yes. Base and top is of course very flexible and can be applied straight on the natural nail. It's actually made as a base base product to put on the natural nail. Even though nowadays you can put almost everything on the natural nail. Yeah. <laughs> but when we developed gel polish, this was really unique because yeah. there was not a top gel that you could apply on the natural nail. Oh. Mm. Because top gels normally are too hard yes, to be applied on the natural nail. And then extreme matte top gel. Extreme matte top gel is also a little bit harder mm -hmm. than, for instance, a base and top. But with the building base underneath it, there's no problem. No, no. D it does get a little bit of a heat spike yes. eh? yeah, after you can about feel a that. second. Yes. One second. Okay, and now? So, and now? Again? Another coat of extreme mud. Okay, it's interesting. Oh, she's going to use that as an adhesion layer, as an adhesive. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay. She's using one of our older brushes. This is unfortunately discontinued, but of course she's, in, uh, she's very careful with her products. And she's drawing a band on the growth out area of the nail. And she has to be doing this for a reason. Yeah, mm. I thought so. Little spray. <laughs> yep, this that is nice. That is cool. And just to hide the fact that the nail has grown out a little bit. And you have a nice design. Yeah. yeah. 
But of course, you could also do this with rhinestones and bullions yeah. and rhinestones and yeah. more rhinestones yeah. and more rhinestones. Yeah. Or add now Absolutely. some rhinestones at also. that border. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By chance, next week the show is all about rhinestones. Oh, no. God. Yeah. oh that one is for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also create something special with rhinestones. Oh, yeah, that's true. So that's a cool way to fix and elongate. Yeah. I think this is not something that you would do really on clients. No. Because a client comes in, she wants to do a fill, you have to file, you have to do it mm -hmm. anyhow. Yeah. But it is, of course, very helpful on your own nails. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because sometimes true. we just yeah. don't have the time to do our own nails. Yeah. And we have, of course, always a party yeah. or a dinner. Yeah. And people are always watching our just nails. Just a quick fix. Mm -hmm. fix. Yeah. Just a quick a fix. Quick fix. Yeah. Do you know any other quick fixes ac except rhinestones or strass, Shariza? Uh, <laughs> no. For, uh, in my <laughs> salon, it always takes hours. So <laughs> no quick fix. Uh, fix for me. <laughs> Sorry, Deborah? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, not for my clients, but for myself, yeah. Uh, once I did uh, just a refill over my old refill. And then put on rhinestones so you didn't see the difference of colors just to keep it a week longer and yeah. then fix the whole new thing. But I needed to fix it at that time for something, a show or I don't know. But And then sit it out. Uh, exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm wondering, now that I'm listening to you, do you always make new nails? Because, of course, modern element you cannot uh, fill. But mm -hmm. do you always, just as a rule of thumb, make a whole new set of nails? On myself, yes, yeah. I do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but I want it. Um, it's not so good for my own nails, or uh, I'll be uh, honest with that, but I just love this design. The uh, ones I had before, this one, were like a, a regular almond, uh, because the time uh, was too short to make this set. And then a week, uh, two weeks later, I thought, no, okay, off. Oh, I took it all off and put these on again. I just... Uh, I can recognize that. Yeah. Did you ever had that? Yeah. That you had nails on and you thought to yourself, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Do then you want the to time. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, <laughs> and then the timer. Huh? So I even went um, because I didn't uh, like my nails because they were too short mm -hmm. and I wanted my stilettos back again. And I'm speaking about 10 years ago. I went uh, to my salon and did my nails. And it was night time. Okay. Yeah. 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 I couldn't sleep. I wanted <laughs> my stilettos back on, and yeah. So I was a really happy, uh, tired girl yeah. <laughs> yeah. the next morning, <laughs> but, but they were long at again. At least you were complete. Yeah, it well felt complete. Yeah. I remember, and I have to share that with you, perhaps it's not the best example, but that is what happens when you're not happy with your nails. Years ago, I think 16 years ago, the first came glitter acrylics. And glitter acrylics, I just thought to myself, oh my god, this is totally the bomb. So I bought all of the glitter acrylics and I started to do my nails. And But if you know, perhaps perhaps you don't, perhaps Deborah can uh, affirm this, that if your blending of the glitter is not perfect, mm. then you can see through mm. underneath the clear application that it's not perfect. Yeah. So I had done my nails this long. And with the glitter, and I went to have a glass of wine with a friend of mine, and I was sitting at the terrace looking at my nails, and I thought, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't help myself. I just chewed them off there, uh, right there, sitting there within five minutes. <laughs> because glitter acrylic is nice and flexible, so that was helpful. <laughs> oh. So I, I, I know the feeling, yeah. looking at your hand and not standing what you yeah. see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can remember another story. What? You had long French nails, yeah, but they were too long oh. and you needed <laughs> to shorten them. Yeah, I had a colleague of mine and she did my nails, Shiriza. You <laughs> say you are not that fast, <laughs> but she did one hand on, my, on, on me. And she started at 10 o'clock in the morning. She was finished at 11 o'clock in, <laughs> in the evening. <laughs> the nails terrible. were this long, <laughs> <laughs> but they were with a facet in the middle. So th they were very thick in the, in the center of the nails. And it was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But I came home and I didn't dare to go to bed. No. I said to Rick, if I turn and I get stuck mm. in the you comforter, your fingers. Yeah. then yeah. all the nails break yeah. and oh everything my. break. So he took the sanding machine yeah. out of the <laughs> shed <laughs> because I didn't have an electric file at home or a file or anything else. Oh my God. The sanding machine. <laughs> and he was standing there with the sanding machine and he was holding my <laughs> finger like this, uh, pushing it against the sanding machine to shorten the nail. 
that was the last. And then the next day I had to go into the cell and then tell her, listen, darling, <laughs> <laughs> something happened. <laughs> I kill you. <laughs> it came for <laughs> <off laughs> <themselves>. nothing. <laughs> yeah, that was not that uh, positive uh, and not, not that. that. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> enough about me. Although I believe that wearing nails and having nails on my hands is actually now it n nowadays a trend. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Perhaps not this long, but no. then how? Silvana, clarify. Yes. What is really growing in this nail world is men that are wearing nail uh, gel polish. Let's see. It's quite basic, but I think it's really nice. I love this. Cool. Yeah. yeah. White and black colors, but it's very neutral, but it's really nice. So, uh, Papain, how did people react to you when they see your nails, when they are re really long? Oh. When, well, when they were very, really long. Yeah. People n didn't react, or they just asked me, how can you live? And once I had that, I went to an ATM machine and I wanted to get some money and I put my, my card in the machine yeah. and my nails were this long and we spoke about that earlier. Yeah. And I couldn't get my card out of the uh, ATM machine because my nails were too long and there was a man standing behind me. A man! <laughs> so there I was with my long nails and it was very thin and there was a man. <laughs> it was at the airport. So I turned around at yeah. that man and I said, uh, can you please help me get my cart out of the machine and he just looked at me like this <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't help me and I had to go to Bulgaria for six days without money that was really terrible so people <gasps> were kind of shocked yeah <laughs> oh yeah I see that's really terrible <laughs> I have another few examples more nail art the smiley one I like that and for the last one yeah, very cool. basic. Yeah, cool. Mm. cool. Yeah, I think it had to be more normal and accepted that men are just wearing gel polish. Well, I see you next week. Bye. Why not? Yeah, huh? why not? Yeah. yeah, I love this. Yeah, it's actually I hope cool. it's going <coughs> to be a really trend. Yeah, what, what do you trend? guys think of this? Hmm. Well, it would have to fit you. I, yeah. I love it. Uh, also, uh, Andre Hazes, that's a Dutch artist. And I think for him, it's yeah, he can wear it as well. Absolutely. Uh, Depends on the, the black person. nail polish. Very, very nice. Yeah, I love it. Why not? Yeah. But you have to be that kind of man to wear that. And if you want to wear it, you have to know what to wear. So yeah. I think that's important. Do you have uh, clients, men clients, male clients? Deborah? Yeah, one. But he's um, turning to be uh, a female. So he came. He comes uh, to my salon for almost uh, three years now, but he's in, um, in transition. transition to become a woman. So he started with only the pink nails oh. for uh, nail art, and now he has a full set of ten with a uh, color. No, no nail pol no uh, nail art, but only colors. But the most expressive colors. Oh, so nice. And he's very accepted in his job. And when you look at him, still. He's like a real bold man. Uh -huh. He works in the harbor, so it's a <laughs> real man, man. But he's just not uh, well, not happy in his body. So, yeah, I, l I really love it the way uh, he goes around with it. Okay, and it's yeah. the first step. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, that is yeah. uh, absolutely. also possible. Beautiful. Did you ever have a male client? No, no. But uh, back in the days when I. Um, at a uh, full salon, um, I went to um, uh, every Thursday. There is a uh, party um, mm -hmm. where I live, and we have themes. And yeah. one theme was um, on a Thursday, always a Thursday, uh, a drag queen uh, theme. Yeah. So um, the the drag queens were there, and I would love to have a salon with drag queens because you have. Extreme yeah. nail art yeah. and yeah. long nails and uh, everything is possible. Yeah. You can do everything and put on everything. I would nice. love that. Yeah. But no, sadly, no, I do not have men in my salon. Well, mm. nowadays in Holland, we do have drag race. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. you yeah. never Come know on. what may happen. <laughs> <laughs> you have another design for us. Yeah. And this is now really nail art just to get all just fun. yummy. yummy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Let's check it out.
So this is called the geometrical animal design? Yeah, and I'm losing, uh, using air nails maskings to create on my white surface, mm -hmm. which I've buffed uh, with my white block before I am putting on my uh, masking to give that teeny Sharp tiny bit uh, of squares. Yeah, and color. So oh. yellow. Cool. And green. The background is not white, but soft green. I think oh, the willow oh. green. Ah. Just creating an ombre into those squares. A ooh, darker ooh. color. And now, not removing the masking, put on a stamp. And the, uh, it doesn't uh, damage the masking if you do stamping on top of a masking? No, you can uh, remove all of the, the polish, the nail polish, or whatever you are using over the masking. You can remove it. Hmm. Oh, that's nice. Oh, cool. Ooh, this is a nice combo. Ooh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> ah, the thin line. You can do this with liner gel, but I use master paint. Love those jungle colors. And the master colors. detailer. Hmm? Oh, love nice. those jungle colors. Yeah, it's green, yellow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, with gold. And the, the gold sticker. Cool. I'm going stickers. to steal this design. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this is really easy. Cool. And yeah. easy, yes. I've done this as well. This is green and yellow, but with uh, purple and pink. Yeah. And um, with our leaf uh, stamping plate. Oh, it's also as nice. Well, also a design. It's really cool. And you can use the foil, sti foil stickers, but you can use uh, the Cerisa Sweeties as a stripe as well. Liner gel gold. Liner gel gold, yeah. This is the kind of stamping that I love. <laughs> it's easy, it stays easy. Yeah. Yeah, it stays easy. Yeah. And combining yeah. Sure. because of the, the ombre underneath with air nails. It's fast. Yeah. So this is a mixture of uh, liner gel black. Uh, with Cerisa Sweeties, because I want my lines to stay uh, shiny on top. Yeah. And I have more control over my line when it's mixed with liner gel black. This is almost like Art Deco meets animal skin. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Nice. Ooh. You see? With mm -hmm. the leaves? Cool. Yeah, with the leaves, yeah, it's nice. And the African plate I've used for the second one. Cool. Yes. Love it. Love, Love them all. Yeah, nice. So animal print meets uh, abstract geometrical. Yeah. I think animal prints are are the thing. We say French manicure is the benchmark nail, but the animals prints are always, always. there. They always. come and they go. Yeah, summer, winter, always. Yeah. yeah. Is that also your experience? Yes, yeah. yes, of course. We, we see that every year back again. Yeah. Uh, you see the animal prints with different colors, though, yeah. in yeah. winter or summer. You can always use them. And new products. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. So or with pastel colors yeah. and then yeah. the neon colors. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. You can use it always. Yeah. Love them. Animal prints. Next season, we're going to do a show purely on animal prints. Yeah. Our last demo of this evening is done by Julia Koncharova, and she's going to show us the aqua wave. Now she's going to use gel polish. White is white. After two coats, finish it with extreme matte, cure it, and then use the aqua colors. Uh, that's the wave. Yep. Yeah, that's the <laughs> wave. The wave wave. <laughs> Applying some on the palette, because you can also work with the aqua colors from the palette but then you have to dilute it a little bit, for instance, with prep and wipe when you take it off. 
adding some purple here and there, playing around a little bit. This brings back memories of summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's almost like a tidal wave. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I'm just missing a surfer. I'm missing yeah. a surfer. <laughs> I'm missing a little surfer in the wave. Teeny yeah. tiny one. Yeah, yeah. That just goes through the wave. <laughs> or a shark that you see in the wave <laughs> itself. <laughs> or a combination. That is a whole story yeah. 3D yeah. in the nail. Yeah, so cool. next week, Nail Talk Live is all about glitters and rhinestones. Cool. Awesome crystals, awesome designs. Everybody's going to show you a lot, a lot of inspiration. Thank you again, Deborah, Silvana, and Sirisa for Thank being you. here. Thank all of you for watching, and we end off on a bang, and that's Fiber Code by Magnetic. Yay. Bye. 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 Bye.